everyone, welcome to episode 13 of Ship Pick 6. It's been one heck of a week, NHL free agency, NBA free agency, so many big moves to get to. We also have the Wimbledon and the Women's World Cup. For pick number 6, we start with the NHL free agency. There have been huge moves across the league, but honestly, for me, there's been three major moves. Some expected, some totally surprised everybody. The first being Artemi Panarin, signing with the New York Rangers. Many speculated this would be his destination, however he was also drawn to the Florida Panthers at first, where his former coach Joel Quenville is now the head coach. But when it was decision time, he chose the Big Apple for a 7-year, $81.5 million contract. That's $11.6 million a year, now making him the highest paid winger in the NHL. Now with the accusation of such an amazing forward and the number 2 draft D, the Rangers-Devils rivalry is definitely heightened for this upcoming season. The number two power move is Joe Pavelski leaving the Sharks and Corey Perry leaving the Ducks, both for the Stars. Now, Sharks fans must feel really betrayed by their former captain. He spent 16 seasons there after being drafted in the 03 draft class, and Corey Perry spent all his career in Anaheim as well. I mean, I just cannot believe Corey Perry's decision. He was being paid $8.6 million a year by the Ducks, and took an enormous pay cut only signing with the Stars for a one-year, $1.5 million deal. I mean, good for the Stars. They needed power forwards after losing free agents Matt Zuccarello and Jason Spezza. Joe Pavelski, Corey Perry, Alexander Radulov, Tyler Sagan, and Jamie Benn, this Stars team is going to be dangerous next season. Now, I think the biggest shock of the offseason so far has been the Florida Panthers. Many of you are going to disagree with that because they didn't land a big-name guy like the Rangers or the Predators with Matt Duchesne. But you know what? They strategized. They were a down-and-out team. They've only made the playoffs twice in the past 10 years, and they needed things here and there from different teams. They really made smart decisions. They acquired goalie Sergei Bobrovsky from the Blue Jackets, forward Brett Connolly from Washington, defenseman Anton Strawman from Tampa, and forward Nola Chari from the Bruins. Now, are these guys Crosby's or Ovechkin's? No, they're not, but they have experience, and that's what the Panthers need. Achari just played in the Stanley Cup, Sergei Bobrovsky's a veteran goaltender, Anton Strawman was just a part of the 62-win season with Tampa, and Brett Connolly just won the Stanley Cup with Washington last year. And with Hall of Fame coach Joel Quenville, this Panthers team is going to have a completely different look this upcoming season. Panthers fans should be really excited for the upcoming season. Now for pick 5, 4, and 3, it's the huge moves that came out of NBA free agency. I don't even know how to rank them, so I'm just not going to. This week probably goes down in NBA free agency history. I've never seen anything like it. So that being said, in no order, I think the biggest moves of this week were Kawhi and Paul George teaming up to go to the Clippers, Kyrie and KD going to Brooklyn, and the metaphorical magnet that the Lakers seem to have on the rest of the league. Now, let's break these up. Let's start with Kyrie and KD. Everyone knew for months Kyrie was going to Brooklyn, but KD was more of the iffy player. He was deciding between multiple teams, and Sunday when the news broke, it was crazy. The world went nuts. I think it was the loss of Zion for the Knicks that turned him away from signing with them, and he went to Golden State for a reason to win a trophy. He did what he came to do, and he wanted out. But really, he'll only play for three years in Brooklyn because his Achilles injury will keep him out for probably the entire year next year. Next, I think, is the most shocking move of free agency. Kawhi to the Clippers. Four years, $142 million. And he brought Paul George with him. Nobody saw this one coming. What a Western Conference rivalry in LA with the Lakers. Now, this brings me to Kawhi's impact. Okay, before he signed, the Lakers had LeBron, Anthony Davis, Kyle Kuzma, you know, the big name players. And after he signed, this is where the metaphorical magnet comes in that I was talking about before. The Lakers then signed Danny Green from Toronto and DeMarcus Cousins from the Warriors. Staples Center is going to be insane this upcoming season with that rivalry. Pick number two is the 15 year old phenomenal Coco Goff. It all started last week when she faced off against her childhood hero, Venus Williams, in her first match in the majors ever. She shocked the entire world, beating Venus in straight sets 6-4, 6-4. After the first round victory, you think, alright, maybe it's beginner's luck. Nope. 
She backed that up with a second round win and went on to the third round. Now, in all my years of watching tennis, that's Federer, Nadal, both Williams sisters, and a ton of other people, I have never seen a match like this, let alone in the third round, like I saw Friday. Coco Goff was down 6-3, 5-2, about to lose, when something sparked and she just lit up the court and made an insane comeback. I'm honestly speechless. I don't even know how to put it into words. She saved two match points and went on to win the second set in a crazy tiebreak. She then dominated the third set, going up 4-1. to one. Everyone thought, wow, she's got this. Her opponent, Herzog, was not giving in so soon and won the next three games to tie it at 4-4. Four four. Coco unleashed the beast in her and wound up winning the last set, giving her the edge into the round of 16. She racked up 5.2 million viewers, which is more than the Wimbledon saw last year for the men's final between Djokovic and Anderson by 700,000 people. She was ranked 313th in the world. After Friday's match, she's now in the top 150. If she beats Kerber tomorrow, she'll be in the top 100. You got this, Coco. I can't wait to see what you do tomorrow. Everyone's rooting for you. For pick number one, of course, our Women's World Cup champions. Back-to-back -back champions. We now join Germany as the only two countries to have back-to-back -back championships. This game today was crazy. Now, our team is used to scoring in the first 15 minutes of the game. That didn't happen. The Netherlands has not trailed at all throughout the entire tournament. That did happen today. The game was deadlocked at zero when Alex Morgan was fouled in the box in the 61st minute. Captain Megan Rapino drilled the penalty kick past Netherlands goalie to give the U.S. the lead. The Netherlands were now officially trailing for the first time. When you give Megan Rapino an opportunity to score, she does not miss. About eight minutes later, Rose Lavelle's solo effort up the field sealed the deal and we raised our fourth trophy in just eight World Cups. As amazing as today was, I think it's worth mentioning what Megan Rapino brought up in a press conference yesterday. The unfair pay gap between the men's winner and the women's winner. Last year, FIFA awarded the men's winner $400 million. The U.S. women's national team will only take home $30 million. Why? Did they achieve something different? Or are they playing the same tournament, with the same level of difficulty, with the same ball, and hoisting the same trophy? So why are the men being paid 13 times more than the women? There's absolutely no reason. This is going on all over the world. It's ridiculous. It needs to be stopped, especially in sports, when they both won the same thing, the same trophy. Why are they getting paid so much more? It's insane. It needs to be stopped. Something needs to happen. These women are role models, and you know what? They don't deserve to be treated as any less than the men. I'm sure these women aren't even thinking about that right now because they're celebrating as they should be. Thanks for tuning in to the Madness the Sports World saw this week. We'll have so much more. Thanks for tuning in to Shake Pick 6.